Yo, 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 we're back. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. <laughs> Someone had some wine earlier. Later on, Praguita took us for tour. It was great. We went around, <laughs> saw vines. It was nice. We had to build our own small little hills into the vineyard. So every six rows or so, six to eight rows, there's a little peak, a little valley that allows that extra water to run off. <laughs> Sometimes when we go to Harvest House, we buy a case of wine. <laughs> We're boondocking and we have TV. Theoretically, you could run your straightener nonstop for how long? Like 13 hours so you, with a 73% battery. So you could just line up the ladies outside and have them pay like $5 a person and just do hair straightening? I could. I'm Harry and this is Fran and we're not hitting the I'm trail. I'm Fran? She's scouting the route out. So older parks tend to have a lot tighter roads. Um, and in the park we're at, the main entrance goes past, like the only way out is through, oh yeah, I think we're good, through the um, dump station. And even that's really tight. So if there's something in the dump station, we want to try to kind of cut it. And I just got the, the clear. We may go a little overboard in how we think about exiting and getting out of places and stuff like that. I just, you know, when your whole house is on wheels and you're pulling it behind you, you want to be extra careful. I don't think you guys would be like it. I think big old pothole. I know, I just nailed that one pothole. I was sitting there talking about being extra careful and then pothole. <laughs> That's okay. So the next thing is going to be um, this corner because that guy likes to park his truck hanging out in the road. So here's another, oh, hi. Here's another thing. When you're at an RV park, be conscientious of where you're parking your vehicle because if a part of your vehicle is hanging out into the road, you actually are causing kind of a, a blockage. Oh, man, and nobody wants a blockage by the dump station. Oh no, not this dump station either, because this dump station is next to the trash, which is raunchy. Oh yeah, so this is like, it's like a little gauntlet up here. So we've got tail swing on the left, and yep. someone's already hit that dumpster. Oh yeah, I'm sure they've hit it, it's like a gauntlet. This guy's truck is pretty close to the edge. Don't swing her anymore, because she'll hit his truck. All right, you're good. Are you gonna make it past that car in front of you? Yeah, I got room there. We're gonna just squeak past the truck. Okay. All right. And we've accomplished our mission. And now we're on to the... Yeah, she's had to get in and out quite a few times. <laughs> So we're on our way to another Harvest Host, the Summer Crush Winery. Carbon, we have, we have Ibis. Look at them all. He's gonna get himself a beverage. And then we're gonna interview him. And then we're gonna interview him. Hi, sir. I'd like to do an interview with you. Can you tell me a little bit about this Lion Energy product that we have? I can. <laughs> this is. This is happening because I've, I've talked to her about it, but she hasn't really listened until the point when we actually need to start using it. And now she's like, how much power do we have? So normally when we boondock, we have what's on the batteries and that's it. Um, or we could pull out the gas generator, which is loud. Uh, you can only run it at certain times of the day or sometimes they just don't allow it. So anyway, we, we talked with Lion Energy and they sent us this this is actually the Safari ME Deluxe Kit. So normally 
if you buy the Safari ME, you just get the main uh, unit, which is 988 watt hours. What is a watt hour, you may ask? It's how many watts you would use per hour depending on what a device is. So if your device uses 100 watts per hour, you theoretically would get 9.88 hours of usage on that device, okay? So with the, with the ME Deluxe, you get the expansion pack, which is almost another 2,000 watt hours. So combined, you have almost 3,000 watt hours. Anyway, first time boondocking without having to use the gas generator. So we can plug everything into this. Um, so we've got it here, we'll be able, to, we can actually watch TV while we're boondocking. So we can watch our favorite shows tonight. So we'll plug in the TV and stuff. Um, if we want to use the microwave, we can plug that in. And right now it is, I don't have the expansion pack plugged in, but that's 100%. And this is at 100% too. So again, this is, between these two is almost 3000 watt hours. So if you were using something that took 100 watts per hour, you get 30 hours off this. All right, so Susanna's gonna make some a coffee. Oh, I'm dying. I really need some coffees. So normally when we make coffee when we're boondocking, we have to do the French press. So you have to turn on the oven, get it heated up, um, so you're using propane, creating more heat inside. Right now we're just using our regular, like, what is that, like a $15 generic Keurig thing. Yeah, 20 bucks. Okay. What that's saying is if we ran this coffee pot for two hours and 41 minutes straight, nonstop, that's how much power would be left. But we don't do that because it's just making it cover coffee. Yeah, it's gonna make it cover coffee. You unplug it, and then it's gonna jump back up. So what you're hearing that's an internal fan, and when you think about it, right? So a generator uh, is usually, I think it has to be below like 70 or 64 decibels and 25 feet away to be in a national park. But generally, gen I mean, generally generators. Generally, generators are gonna be pretty loud. Even like your really expensive, you know, your Hondas, uh, the smaller ones, they're still putting off quite a bit of noise, plus you're burning fuel. And right now, fuel's over $4 a gallon where we're at. Um, so this so, is a much better option. Yeah. But this has already added a capability. That, a capability that we haven't had, making coffee. I mean, something simple as making a cup of coffee is I mean, coffee and wine. That's what I like. <laughs> that's, that's, you know? that's what she does. I love her. <laughs> Hot coffee. Yo, 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 we're back. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. <laughs> Someone had some wine earlier. It's not affecting me anymore. That was the spinach. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's why I don't eat spinach. It makes me go all crazy. <laughs> So we are at the Summer Crush Winery yeah, in Fort Pierce, Florida. It's this, this is a, a Harvest Host, which if you don't know what Harvest Host is, it's a way that you can stay at like, there's a few thousand- Unique destinations. Wineries, vineyards, Distilleries, museums, museums you know, I think golf that courses. Yeah, golf courses, if you add the golf course package. And then they actually bought Boondockers Welcome so if you buy that package, you have like another 3,000. There's anyway, there's just so many different places that you can stay that are so cool, like unique, right? So Summer Crush Winery, uh, it's it's all fruit wine, right? Like yeah, muscadine, muscadine, mango, whatever. Yeah, we pineapple. tried a pineapple. We, yeah, so we we came out here. Uh, we we paid ten dollars for the spot, mm -hmm. um, and then. Generally, we spend a little bit too much inside the wine. It happens. I like wine, so you know sometimes you got to stock up. Mm -hmm. So we and did. We a, haven't been to a winery in a bit, so we had to stock up. We haven't. Yeah. So we did a, a tasting. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that! It's even. It's. It's got Marilyn's blonde hair and dress. It looks good too. Sometimes when we go to Harvest House, we buy a case of wine. 
<laughs> so our muscadine grapes, we picked them a long time ago because we were going to try to make some wine and then they just went bad. I don't even remember eating them. We made They're jelly. Really I made grape jelly. Are they naturally really them? sweet on their own? They are. They are. So that's why a lot of the wines are more yeah. sweet. Okay. It's the only kind of grape we can grow in Florida. We picked them in Mississippi. They yeah. smell so good. Yeah. Cheers. All right. Grape juice. Ben, you guys tried this. I like Quite the a different flavor. I like this one yeah. better. You yeah. like this one? I actually uh -huh. started out liking this one better, but then when I started drinking more and more, I ended up liking the red better. Because this one's kind of reminiscent of regular it is. grape juice, like oh, okay. concrete I grape thought you juice. Meant of the wine. Like I was like, they taste just like the wines to me. Actually. Yeah, that one does for sure. I like mm -hmm. the red one better. It smells kind of like cheese. Oh. Cheese. I like cheese. Yeah. I like cheese. It's like a um, It's like a German ice wine, but not a little bit different. Uh, more spice. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes we disagree on our wines. So you like that one? I like this one a lot. Yep, yeah, I like that one a lot. I do, yep. Yeah. Alright, what's yeah. your name? Is this one your favorite? I think so. I like that one and then I really liked the um, Old Florida White. And then later on we went back over and uh, we got a tour and this, uh, what was her name? B? Brigitte? Brie. 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 So, Brigitte. Brigitte. <laughs> later on, Brigitte took us for tour. It was great. We went around, <laughs> saw vines. It was nice. Probably Very one of the cool. best tours that we've had at a Harvest Host. Now this property um, here, Summer Crush Winery, was purchased back in 1999 by Gary and Susan Roberts, our owners, and they purchased this property the same year they got married. The biggest concern that Gary had was grapes. How are we going to grow grapes in Florida? We need something agricultural. And a friend of his had found some research about the muscadine grape that could thrive in our climate. We broke ground in 2010, started planting the vineyard, building the festival area, the cellar, the pavilion, or the tasting room. That all took about two years. And then July 14th, 2012, we opened. We had to build our own small little hills into the vineyard. So every six rows or so, six to eight rows, there's a little peak, a little valley that allows that extra water to run off. Our vines are also a lot taller than traditional vines. And that's because we do all of our harvesting here by hand. A lot of more commercial vineyards will have shorter vines where they drive tractors over that will shake the vine underneath it and the grapes will drop off. I didn't know that. We put on our super high-tech buckets. Oh yeah, those are fancy. Just buckets right on a harness. It's right on our chest and that allows us to get the bucket right under the vine so we can just drop the grapes in and not have to do any back-breaking bending to pick our grapes. So they will look like this for the next month or so, but by the end of April, they will start to look like this. They'll have their new greenery come out, got these cute little baby grapes starting to show up and from the end of April to the end of July they will make this wow. transformation and they will be in nice and month, full in just a few be... months April wow. they will usually start to flush out by the beginning of April is when the first growth will come out so April May June and then by the end of July they are pickable oh wow yep and that's my favorite time of year because I get to go through it <laughs> nice. so, yeah. yeah, they knew that music was going to be part of it Gary actually plays bass in a band and always made jokes that nobody would book his band to play. So we had to build a place for his band to play. <laughs> Before the world ended in 2020, we could fit about 450 people in here if we put a button every seat. Post-COVID, we're still operating at about 70% capacity. So we could probably fit between 250 to 300 in here with a button every seat right now. This is where we make, process, bottle, and store all of our wine. So because we're harvesting our grapes for six to eight weeks and we want to use them all at the same time, we freeze them the day that we harvest them. Nice. And that allows them to just freeze where they are. The red grapes, we want everything they have to offer. The grape skins, the seeds, we want all of that. The skins are giving the wine color and the seeds are actually providing to the depth of the flavor as well. The white grapes have much thicker skins. They're more bitter. We don't want them. All right. And then now we've got this huge spot uh, for the night. It's very quiet. You can kind of hear a highway way off in the distance, but not even, not even yeah. gonna hear it inside. I don't think, unless we I have didn't. the windows open, which <laughs> it's supposed to be cold tonight, so we can actually not use the air and have the windows closed and be warm. Yeah. So if you're interested in getting the Harvest Host membership, 
there's a link down below it'll save you 15 percent um and then so tomorrow we're off to saint augustine in florida for the celebration <laughs> of for our child's birthday we have a couple exciting the, things to do the celebration of our hop on hop birthday. off trolley tour um some museums there may or may not be a pirate ship there's a pirate ship or two and a battle there's gonna be swashbuckling yep and treasure hunting treasure hunting maybe we'll go to an adventure park yeah so lots of stuff to, yeah. to going on up there make sure that uh if you like this video give us a thumbs up if you don't i'm harry and this is fran and we're not hitting the I'm trail i'm fran <laughs> Okay, that's fine. Call me Fran <laughs> if you don't like this video. <laughs> but blame Harry. Um, but otherwise, uh, make sure that you hit that subscription button because it's free. And, and the not notification bell so you know when our next video is coming mm -hmm. out. And remember, life's, life's an, an adventure. adventure. Papa. Thank you for watching. We'd love to share our journey with you. So hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you know when a new video is uploaded. And don't forget to leave your comments down below and hit the like button.